Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career series in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we begin by taking a look at the little lander that we used in the previous video and recognizing that I forgot about the data in these instruments. Uh, so I think I'll just keep them here for now. We might attach a science lab to this or we might decide to transmit them after all and I'll decide that based on our needs, but I don't think we need to, so we might as well wait for the science lab. And I, I don't like using the science lab that much, but I also don't like... Well, we could just have a Kerbal bring it back, maybe. We'll have some other Kerbal dock with this. I don't want to lose the, the extra science we get for recovery, at least, so I don't want to transmit it yet. Uh, somebody else pointed out that I didn't have enabled crossfeed on both of these, I, I guess uh, enable, enable, and then um, we just do alt, and then yes, I can transfer. I I don't know, maybe, I'm either getting like flashbacks from when enable crossfeed wasn't even a thing in Kerbal Space Program. For most of my Kerbal career, I swear, we didn't even have crossfeed enabling and disabling on the docking ports. Uh, I've been playing since 2014, so it's been a while. But either there was a flashback to that stuff, or maybe Realism Overhaul does it differently, I'm not sure. Um, it's possible that even with uh, crossfeeding disabled, we can transfer fuels in Realism Overhaul, I forget. But anyway, so a little bit of a brain fart at that, <laughs> on that one as well. Uh, but okay, so we've got that, and... I think we can just go ahead and check on contracts. I forget if there's anything else that I had to atone for. But let's go back to the Space Center and see what we can do. So we've got a little bit of science here. And we've got a lot of EVE stuff again. And we've got Explore EVE, which just requires us to do a spacewalk. We've got Position a Satellite in a Polar Orbit of EVE, which is a really high polar orbit, 90 degree inclination as well. And then we have a bunch of people to rescue from orbit of Kerbin. Moon we've done. We don't need to do that again. Um, haul that into orbit of Eve. I don't think so. Uh, science data from the surface of Eve. We can just transmit it so we can send a probe down. That's fine. There's an orbital station. Now this satellite is uncrewed. So that's... A little bit annoying. We could just, you know, let it off. And it just needs some magnetometer boom, which is fine for science. And, or maybe that satellite could be our lander, but then it's in a really high orbit at that point. So maybe we'll have that be separate. Now, again, I'm trying to bundle everything in. This orbital station is lucrative, but we need to have three pilots on board. Uh, we'll see. We'll see about that. So maybe, I mean, the most logical thing to do is let's take a look at the position of Eve right now and time warp if necessary. Oh, but are those contracts there anymore? Shoot, I should have just picked them up. Uh, it's all different. But now we have an orbital station around Gilly, which is sort of more helpful. And this one doesn't require three pilots on board, so it's nicer. It requires a viewing cupola, which if you have the cupola plus the the hitchhiker storage container, that's already five Kerbals. So this is actually better. It, I think it pays just as much. But plant flag on Eve isn't happening, so just... That's that. Okay, so that one... I don't need a new orbital station there. Science data from the surface of Eve we can get. And... Do we want to do... There's a retrograde orbit one here. And then there's this one. It doesn't require the magnetometer anymore, but maybe we should put one on. But maybe we won't package it all together. I'll see. It'd be nice to, but I'd also like nice big antennas on them. Though it's sort of duplicative. Because we... Still don't have any more powerful antenna. We need to put two of these to reach Kerbin continuously. And putting two of those is icky. <laughs> it's not the best looking sort of thing. So the least we need is a cupola plus a hitchhiker storage container. I know we could probably put like two crew cabins. That would be lighter. 
but I mean, marginally lighter. It's only two tons. This screw, uh, this hitchhiker storage container. It's only a little bit lighter. Power for this. Let's get these solar panels. I don't need. I don't think it needs to be extendable solar panels. Let's just have one on the back, and we'll remove the flag. Maybe two supplementary panels. just in case we're not facing the right direction and some very simple docking ports we just gotta put them under the windows these are gonna be interesting little satellites so let's say we wanted two of these can we just put them like that I guess that could work how horrible will that be for aerodynamics? Maybe not too bad. But we need a controller. Mm. This has to uh, be able to independently control from other things. So that's a satellite that should be able to communicate continuously with Kerbin. And we can ditch that, but we still definitely need a dish on here. Mustn't forget that requirement. So I'll just put the high gain antennas instead. I believe sparks will be a good choice here. Okay, and then ants. Okay. So we definitely have comms on here. We certainly have a core, power, fuel. We'll have the reaction wheel control from the Provodabudine. Let's say 3.23 tons. So that's basically, let, uh, I'll give it a little bit of margin. It's about two tons of fuel. We have 3,000 meters per second in that satellite, so that should be good. Uh, this orbital station has to get into orbit around Gilly. It, on its own, has 1,700 meters per second. I feel like we're going to be using these first to get everything into orbit around Eve. In that case, how much is that? Only 800. Should we do this? I think we should probably use this one. And we'll put a reverse decoupler on it. There was a fourth contract. Oh yeah, the little lander. Hmm. Well... It's just any science. Why don't we just put parachutes on this? We are over mass. And I don't think this could get itself over to... Maybe, maybe we should just split this up a bit. Yeah, let's get an unlimited launch pad so I don't, don't even have to think about that. We can't afford the R&D building yet though. Um... Is there anything else? Unknown object tracking. We are we are the group that is supposed to be taking care of the asteroids here, so that might be a thing. Oh, so upgrading our DSN would improve our communica existing communications with... Yeah, I think the satellite around EVE already would be good enough. That connection that we have right now would be good enough to relay on its own if we just upgraded the DSN. So, I'll do that. Okay, I think we'll definitely simplify the one that's ultimately going to land. I'm gonna take all this off, and we're gonna build those separately, and then I'll see what we can do. So let me just save this. This, that's small. I like that. I mean, physically speaking, that's tight. And will not get in the way of a heat shield. I want to tuck it in like that, just for looks. And we want to have a tank. And this might be a good time for something like this. And then a heat shield at the bottom. And then we can have parachutes. Probably the drogue chutes would be enough. Uh, hmm. Do you suppose I could tuck in a 
Oh, I remember using uh, the surface mounts. Yes, no? Uh, yes, it does. So, I'm going to do something sneaky. I'm going to put that there. And just one, please. I'm going to take advantage of the space. <laughs> okay, so we have science. We'll use half a blader. That's two tons. Pretty much exactly. Okay, well we've got a little setup here. And now we're going to add a smaller decoupler. Now then we'll just mount it on top of the previous Ely station thing. So I'm gonna reroute to this part. Subassembly Eve assembly. One. Okay, so then we can reduce the size of the fairing. Okay, well that's a fairing. We would technically be under the old limit, but maybe we should give this more of a boost. I haven't had occasion to try these Pollux boosters, but I think they might be too big. Oh no, they don't look too bad. At least we don't have to send Kerbals on it. Uh, so, our requirements aren't too bad, and it's not too much going on here. I think we need a little bit more power on the station side, though. Um, maybe we'll just give it a go and see what happens. It's a little bit expensive for that sort of approach. We need crew to operate this if we... Yeah, we need this to be capable of independent operation. That's a little bit of a problem, isn't it? Uh, you know what? We are going to send one Kerbal with it. Darn it. We're going to have a permanent crew around Eve. We will have Chadman. Chadman sounds expendable. But I like the look of the rocket, so we're going to have it give... Yeah, we're gonna give it a go and then we'll see what went wrong afterwards. Okay, um, booster separation is gonna be interesting. I don't know how these shape up. And we still don't have separatrons or anything. There, we need 160 science. You know what? Maybe we should just transmit that stuff around the moon. I sort of. <laughs> whenever I leave science lying around, I end up having a reason to get it. No, oh, there's a shrimp too. The seismic accelerometer takes a lot of charge. And so precision propulsion, which is an entirely precise precise, we will get. So with that, I get to place my treasured separatrons. Well, maybe that will go well. Maybe. Let's find out. So save. Get Chadman in there instead of Jeb. And go. I needed to auto strut. So. I'll strut. Grandparent part. And I'll also. Auto strut from up here down to heaviest. Ah, it's the boosters again. Root part is fine. I feel like we're a little bit early on the eve window, but we'll go and see. We can hang out in orbit if that's true. So, everything else seems to be okay. We don't have any way of bringing Chadman home, let me just note. It is our intention to leave Chadman wherever he ends up. SAS on, Thrall is up, and... Launch. Oh, I should have done... Where is the mod propeller? Oh, the cupola. We're past the speed of sound. Okay, we'll have to deviate from prograde here. Uh, separation of the boosters. That's fine by me. Looks good. Going more decisively horizontal. 
Well, I do hope this stage manages to help us out capturing around Eve as well. Okay. And that's orbit. With 1,480 meters per second in this stage to spare. We could probably just keep burning or close to it. Oh, there was an encounter. Okay, go. Just go. Go. <laughs> probably I should have shoved in a separate upper stage, to be honest. Something that would take the place of that spark stage, but be a little bit more robust. Okay, we've got a nice little approach to Eve right away. We happen to be at one of the nodes here. So we need to go into that orbit. That, that one is the one I want to go to. And it does occur to me that Putting it into orbit around Gilly is going to be complicated from this retrograde orbit, though. Hmm. Let's see, how much does it take to capture? I think it's more important to get the station to Gilly. That's the lucrative contract. So I'm going to pass on this orbit right now. We could probably do it with one of the probes on their own, we'll see. But let's just focus on a Gilly-like approach instead. Okay, well, that's, that would be matching Gilly, which we don't necessarily want to do, but that's 700 meters per second there after 64 in the middle. And we'll start with that. The rest is going to be complicated, we'll see. Anyway. Off we go. We won't have any problems with comms. I, I think that's pretty solid, especially since we have Chadman. <laughs> but uh, even if we didn't have Chadman, I don't think we'd have problems with comms at this point. Though I'll just extend the high gain antennae before I forget. Though again, we have Chadman in there, so that should not be a problem. Just trying to be paranoid. Yep, we've got all the unknown objects now. We better do something about them, huh? Okay, turning to the node. Thank goodness for the cupola's reaction wheel here. Okay, we should probably be able to burn right now. Okay, that's close enough for me. Let's take a look at the situation at Eve to verify that that's what I wanted. Yep, pretty much. Okay, and we don't want to have an encounter just yet. Yeah, something like that. All right. Proceeding to Eve. We are recharging. Okay, we are in Eve SOI. Let's see, Chadman. We didn't actually get the Explore Eve contract that would give us something for an EVA. Well, except we do get the science. So there's that and crew report. No, I guess we'll re review that. Let's transmit. And transmit. Okay. Well, we got something done. We've got all things for the ghillie station, so that's nominal. Okay. Let's go to the node there. And finally, we'll expend this stage. I think it'll be left in interplanetary orbit. Well, the sparks are gonna take longer, so let's just do it.
Though maybe that wasn't the best tact. Okay. Separation. Well, they certainly are going to take a while. And yeah, that stage is still in interplanetary orbit. We had more Delta V in this stage than I thought we did. The number there had been lying. Not a surprise, though. Okay, that is a capture. And if we bring it down a little bit, should get an encounter there. Yep, 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 come on. There we go. All right, so we have an encounter, but I don't need all of this to be involved in this encounter. In fact, I don't need any of it involved in this. So that's all fueled up. That's got an antenna. It should be okay on its own. Decouple. All right. So what this needs to do is dip itself into Eve's atmosphere. And we are going to check whether it has the Delta V to do that. It'd be better if it does it at this apoapsis. It can pull itself down. Yeah, it's got tons of Delta V. Maybe too much. So maybe... Can we go into that polar orbit first? And then dip ourselves into the atmosphere? Uh, it's tough to see. Okay, but somewhere around there we do that. And then if over here we try and do a burn to get into that orbit, it doesn't let me. Uh, okay. Then let's say we go straight down into EVE there. That'll take care of both objectives. Let's say we just do that. It has enough. Okay, so we're going to do that. We, we can wait any number of orbits before actually executing that. So this is ready. It is communicative. It is recharging. Uh, we could spin around so it's a little bit better on that last point. I don't think... Wait. Ah, uh, two barometers? What? I wanted... Ah, uh, I missed the thermometer. <laughs> I put two barometers accidentally. And recovery is not going to happen. Oh well. We'll wait until Eve's atmosphere for the mystery goo. If that's possible. So, let us change back to this. We also don't need this satellite. That's going into the retrograde orbit if possible. So, switch. And it's sort of backwards right now, so I'm going to flip this control point. It's got a lot of delta V though. Okay. That might be doable. So promising, so far promising. We'll leave those for later. And this uh, this one, the retrograde one, will probably be the last one. And we want to do the Gilly station first. And we've, because of the decoupling, lost our encounter. Let me see. Oh, uh, okay, that was quick. Can you be a little bit more gentle than that? There we go. It'd be funny if one of the other satellites accidentally smashed into Gilly. Theoretically possible after the decoupling. We got thrown backwards. Okay, so capturing. We've got plenty of fuel. Still have all the things, right? Yep. Okay, we just need to get to orbit. Where's Gilly? Um, there it is. 
Okay, and ignition. Make sure we have a healthy periapsis so we don't have time warp restrictions. Anyway, Chadman, you can do an EVA and get some of that science. We have other probes for temperature and stuff like that around Gilly. Okay, keep and board. SAS again. Report, transmit, and transmit the EVA report. Okay, so Chadman's all done, and that contract, uh, wait, what? And a docking port can generate power around Gilly, right? So it's got all that check marked. Antenna, yeah. Mm hmm. Docking port, yeah. Can generate power, yeah. What? Maybe the apoapsis is too high. Let's see. Let me go to the periapsis. Didn't say anything. We it's check mark stability even. Okay. Well, it's not saying that's a new station. Okay. So maybe I have to label it a station. Maybe that's the problem. Gosh, I'm worried now. Station. E, uh, Gilly Station. Gilly Station. I definitely launched it after the contract was ex accepted. <laughs> that is... You saw it. One more thing. I'm gonna go to the tracking station and come back and see. Is Gilly still there? Gilly is still there. Okay, now I check my... Phew. We are saved. We do not have to do anything devious with the cheap menu or anything. Okay, what happened to the other contract? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, we are still a go for all the other things. Let's see. Let's switch to that relay. That is the one that's going into the retrograde orbit. I think we'll do that next. Okay, well, we're pretty close, and these spark engines are going to take a little bit of time. Maybe. Let's see. So we should be flipping our orbit, which, since our orbit is 195 meters per second, we would be expecting double that to flip our orbit, and that's basically what it costs, so that tracks. And indeed, minus four, minus three, minus two. Uh, not quite minus one, but we can probably fix it. It's not a problem. The inclination, in this location is not necessarily the best place to fix. So we'll do that first. Overdid it with this satellite. Okay, and go. Well, that looks pretty good. We just need to fix the inclination. So over here. We're actually pretty far off when you really zoom in. Uh, hopefully they don't mind that. Okay, I've got it. Just needed a minor bit of a correction. And maintaining stability. And done. Okay. And finally, this one, which is going to get into a polar orbit first and then bring itself into Eve's atmosphere. Ooh, our communication ain't great. Um... This dish, uh, not as powerful as I thought it would be. All right. 18% right now. Even though we've got all these other connections, I guess because it's got the ability to connect directly back, it's using that even though it doesn't need to. Okay, so I've reset that node. 
Let's go ahead and activate those. Those are pointed uh, opposite, so we actually have to change the control point here too. Did that really reverse? Uh, I don't think you did that right. Control point reverse. Control from here. Where the heck were you controlling from? There's no other controller. Okay, and proceeding. Oh, 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 power. Oh, well, it's recharging. Is it recharging or is it not recharging? Sometimes uh, the readout makes me worried. So what's going to happen here? And we've got a two degree difference. So we probably will have to fix that. And go. Okay, we have gotten that part done. Oh, it accepted it, right? Yep, it accepted that, even though we had two degrees off. You never can tell. All right, science da data from surface of Eve. Well, all the lines are going this way. So we probably want to land or splash down on this side, which means that we should go on to the opposite side to do the retro. I mean, yes, we've got all the communication support, but just for safety's sake, we should allow for a direct line back. That'll be good. All right, so retrograde. And we just want to dip into the atmosphere a bit. Okay, I feel like 64 kilometers is pretty decisive as far as Eve's atmosphere. As far as our parachute, if we even needed it, We certainly don't need it at a minimum pressure of 0, 0.0 something. 0.75 should do. And I'm going to arm it now. Okay, now let's go retrograde. I think we want to reverse how we control this back to normal. Okay. Here we go, into Eve's atmosphere. Okay, we're relying on a direct signal right now, 6%. That should be good enough. Uh, we may or may not have other satellites hanging out for us. It's getting a little bit hot. Ablator is ablating. Will 64 kilometers prove to be enough? I think we've got plasma blackout right now. Oh, something blew up. Something blew up. What? Wait, those things were on this side of the heat shield. What? The heat shield's fine. Why Why did they all blow up just suddenly? F3. Overheating? Well, what chance does that give me? They're on, they were on this side of the heat shield. Well, gosh darn it. That was looking so good, too. The parachute is still around? It's crazy. Maybe the tank... You know, attaching tanks to the heat shields is usually a bad idea, but... Hmm... It's very suspicious to me. Very suspicious. Well, the parachute's... In theory, gonna... Be fine. And land. Because... It's armed already. We had just enough ablator, too. Well, I mean, I don't know if we would have had enough ablator if we had all the mass on it. It doesn't have as much mass now. Well, three out of four, folks. But uh, that was a very suspicious failure on the fourth contract. Yep, the parachute definitely did deploy. I can't switch to it now, though. Which is probably for the best, because this will meet its demise much faster than the parachute does. 
useless, useless heat shield. Didn't shield a darn thing. All right, it meant its demise. All right, so with that disappointment, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.